Hello, there we go. Welcome to my channel. It's your girl Sharon, aka the Melon Nostalgic Runner. And we are back again for another episode of Real Housewives of Potomac. And this is season nine, and this is episode three. It's called Mama Knows Best. Um, so I'm not really sure why it's called this episode. Well, I kind of have an idea, but well, anyway, let's not waste any time. Let's go ahead and get into the review. Um Overall, this was a very, very good episode of Potomac. And I, I do love the direction that Potomac's going so far. So far, so good. Um, but anyway, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into the episode. So the episode continues where we left off where Giselle just kicked um, Stacy, um, Jazzy, and Mia out of the party. Or actually out of the charity event that she had for GNA. And... Um, has security escort them out. It's a whole entire mess. And Stacy is pissed. I mean, upset. And then as they're leaving, Vivian, um, who's Karen's friend, who was also at the event, she actually does come go to their sprinter van to join them just to, you know, say hi. Because the way Giselle kicked them out, like, immediately as I got there... Um, it was a whole thing. And Jazzy and um, Stacy were arguing back and forth with Ashley because, honestly, I, it's, it goes without being said, but, like, um, Stacy knows she got set up. That's, that's what it boils down to. She knows for a fact she got set up because, really, we know that Giselle didn't even really want them there if they weren't going to be there on time, which was, like, 7 p.m., so they just shouldn't have even showed up at all. But instead of Ashley delivering the message to them that just not to show up, she tells them that they're okay to get there at 8. And they get there at 8.04. So it's actual extra insult to injury that they did that. And so, they're, so yeah, Giselle was upset. And um, I think I, from what I remember last episode, I feel like Ashley left out the fact that she, you know, said to get there at eight, eight o'clock. She left that part out. She, she said that they said that they're actually going to get there at eight thirty. So she was, they're actually going to be, you know, Giselle was going to be actually extremely upset with that. So at the end of the day, this is Ashley's doing the way it happened, and it was kind of messed up. But anyway, so that's where you saw Stacy was kind of calling out Ashley, like you said to be here at this time. Kind of making it very clear, like, look, if we didn't think we, you know, would be okay to come, we wouldn't have even tried. Um, at least that's how I saw it, the way it kind of came off on TV. But anyway, so they leave. Um, they're, they're in the Sprinter van, and Vivian joins them. But then Giselle is, like, happy to kick them out. And they're cheersing, but they're like, wait a minute. This is, a, this is an event, you know, an actual event. And Giselle shades, you know, um, Karen in the confessionals, like, my event is an actual event. She just got, she just crashed her car. Like, what are we doing here? This is not a real event. Which, child, when Giselle's right, she right. She's not wrong when she says all that. But, and then someone, I don't think it was actually Giselle. Someone else from the group was like, oh my gosh, we still need to like, you know, it's a fundraiser event. So they're like, yeah, we still need to like get the, you know, meet our goal. So Ashley being messy as all get out was very, was all but delight, delighted to do this. So she's like, she then goes back over to the ladies and try to approach them to give money to the charity, even though they got kicked out. And Jazzy saw the disrespect from a mile away and just proceeds to close the door on Ashley on the Sprinter van. And what gets me is, I'm, I know I'm skipping ahead a little bit. Ashley tried to weaponize this as if, like, she got assaulted. And the context to this is Jazzy, even though she was closing the door, it wasn't her slamming the door. It was literally, you know, your typical van door that's automatic where it does it on its own. So it has a thing where it's not going to close on you that hard. It's going to be very slow, not you know, ridiculous. And I think a lot of the newer vans have the protecting thing where if you're in the way, the, you know, walkway of like where the van will close, um, the, the van door will close, it will stop closing. So the way Ashley tried to weaponize this against Jazzy and tried to say like, she, you know, 
trying to assault her. It was very... Mm, I know there's already a Karen on this show, but like not Karen from Potomac, Karen of her. <laughs> there we go. Anyway, I know I skipped ahead there, but anyway, it does end where all the ladies are just, you know, in the car leaving and they're pissed. Like Giselle's upset and she has a valid reason to be upset. Um, and Ashley didn't feel any way she felt fine but tried to pretend she's upset at jazzy even though she knew she was she knew what she was doing jazzy extremely upset because she's a new girl and just realized she probably she just realized she got set up and stacy realized she got set up so she's pissed too and mia is beyond upset she's like oh my gosh i will never you'll never hear anything again and then just <laughs> The way Mia was insulting Giselle in that car ride, she's like, "Yeah, and that and that etch, like and that um, cabbage patch house." Da 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 da. I was like, <laughs> but anyway, that is where that scene ends. Next, next we have a mini housewives montage where we have um, Wendy with her family and her kids. And what I must say is those kids. Especially the boys, they have gotten so big. Um, like, I, I just, in general, when it comes to this episode, there were a lot of children in this episode. Well, a lot of um, housewives' kids on this episode. And the way the peop the kids in this episode are growing up, it's, like, amazing to me. Because it's it's been nine years. So, it's I mean, hello, it's an obvious thing, but still. But Wendy's only been on the show for, I think, five i want to say five seasons but anyway yeah five years makes a difference um but anyway and then so um and then we from there we see a um, little mini montage scene also of um um Keon oh wow yeah kiana and um greg catching up sorry i got distracted my cat is doing his own thing and i'm gonna need him need to get him off the speaker uh yeah anyway all right so then next is 18 hours later and we see that stacy invites some of the ladies back to her place and i will say this stacy you're nicer than me after ashley would pull that stunt, she would not be invited to my home home again no absolutely not but she's trying to be a bigger person i get it so um anyway she does invite jazzy and I do love, side note, that Jazzy and Stacy they're starting to bond and they're like, they kind of got each other's back. Um, you either see it one way or the other. The two newbies will usually either, they either will duke it out or they'll be the besties and make sure that they do not gain up, get gained up on. So I do like this duel that we have going on right now. But anyway, so Jazzy and um, Stacy they are hanging out. Um, I mean, they... Um, say, Jazzy ends up going to Stacy's. Ashley shows up next, but she secretly wished that Karen would have been the one who showed up next because she also invited Karen. And Jazzy gets right into it and gets right into Ashley. She's like, yeah, it's great to see you after that gangsters and alcohol break. <laughs> event. And the way she said it, I cackled calling it gangsters and alcohol, you know, for the GNA event. And um, Ashley, instead of apologizing for what she did and stuff, she tries to deflect and, you know, um, kind of, you know, make it seem like Jazzy was ass ass assaulting her, even though Jazzy was the one who actually tried to be the bigger person initially and apologizes. So she's like, hey, Although you were being messy, so I'll get out. I'm sorry I closed the, tried to close the door on you. She said that. She left with that immediately after she kind of, you know, shaded her. But then Ashley tried to do the most. And then they start going back and forth and are yelling. And then Karen shows up. And then Karen breaks up saying, what is going on? And um, then again, as soon as um, Karen shows up, Ashley tries to deflect yet again. And tries to, um, you know, she she basically goes to like ask like Karen, why would you, why didn't you tell Giselle and all of us about this event, and say that you weren't going to invite everyone because you wanted 
you know, not to cause a problem, but then you turn around to do the opposite. And then Karen can, will not be outdone when it comes to deflecting, okay? She is not the one or two. She's like, I, you know, she turns it around on Ashley. She's like, well, you know, after my um, birthday inquisition, uh, <laughs> And just starts going off on Ashley for being nosy and messy and all get out. Because then Ashley calls Karen on, on deflecting. And then Karen, <laughs> side note, I totally forgot to mention when Karen was going off on Ashley, she called Ashley out on um, that shady gift that she gave to her for her birthday for the Uber receipts and all that before she mentioned those. <laughs> she called she called her bunnies acorns, um, her friends acorns. <laughs> But I forgot to mention that because I don't know how I did. But anyway, that's how I'm bad. Trump's her and talks about, well, what about your deflection of Michael throughout all the years? And just starts going off about that. And Ash Ashley has nothing to say. Ashley, sorry. She, she just isn't going to win that. And then um, from there... Karen goes off on her and gathers her. It's like you and your bunions. And everyone starts looking at her bunions. And yeah, Ashley looked like a hot mess. Her feet are literally jammed into these platform sandals. And you could see the bunions clear as day. And then Stacy, her confessional, is like, yeah, you know, she's a beautiful woman from like head to ankles. <laughs> um, but then... She does, the way the scene does end, Ashley does state like, hey, um, I will talk to Giselle about this and, um, you know, we'll, we'll see what happens because they're still mad at Giselle mainly. You know, Ashley's getting kind of the brunt of it because, well, she's acting like um, Giselle's um, messenger and this is literally what she's doing. She's Giselle's messenger. Um, and Stacy made it very clear. She's like, there will be no moving forward unless I get an apology. That And that's on period. I was like, oh. <laughs> Side note, I am liking Stacey so far. She's definitely a wild card. And she's definitely not to be messed with. And also, um, Jazzy. I'm also liking Jazzy, too. Like, this team of Jazzy and Stacey, I'm with it. I I'm definitely with it. Um, yeah, anyway. So next we have this brief scene where we have um, Wendy with her mom. And um, basically what's happening here um, is Wendy basically, well, Wendy's mom's being overbearing and um, cooking for the family. And we find out that Wendy, she does cook, but like she cooks like kind of like more of your um, Nigerian food you could get at a restaurant type situation. And um, Wendy's mom like cooks like the deep cuts, like the ones you're getting only the only like, you know, isn't going to be so popular for people who are not used to Nigerian food or foreign food, like that kind of situation. Uh, anyway. And so we find out, though, that Mia um, just invited all the ladies to a trip to North Carolina, Lake Norman, to be exact. And this is also going to be around the time of Wendy's birthday. So she's excited. And side note, what I must say is that Wendy's mom, that glow up, she's definitely, you could tell from last season, she um, has toned it down on the thing she was doing. Um, we're not going to get into that because this is not that. But then also too, um, she definitely looked like she lost some weight. She looks good. She has glowed up. But anyway, so besides that, we also find out that Wendy talked to Eddie's mom. And for those who are not familiar, Eddie's parents kind of stopped talking to Eddie once Eddie and Wendy got engaged. We actually find out a little bit more that um, Wendy's mom and Eddie's parents, well, Eddie's mom actually used to be pretty close prior to the engagement but then as they grew apart, Eddie and Wendy got closer, according to Wendy. And so um, basically the olive branch has definitely, it's showing. And uh, Wendy in her 40s, because this is a milestone birthday for her. Which side note, 
happy belated birthday. We're, I didn't know you were 84 also. I love it. Anyway. <laughs> um, so yeah. Anyway. So besides that, um, Wendy's mom, of course, is like cautiously optimistic, but happy that um, things are finally moving forward. Because although her, um, Wendy's mom and her, um, Eddie's mom may not necessarily get along, um, this is a step. And so um, Wendy's mom said, I tried to, you know, do the olive branch thing at the baptism, but it, it was a no-go. Um, and so Wendy's mom basically said, hey, as long as she comes with um, love, I'll come with love. But she ain't coming with love. I'm praying for her. I'm like, all right. <laughs> That's how that scene ends. So the next scene, we are at um, Kiana's place um, with Greg. And what we find out is that um, although Greg and Kiana are waiting on um, their house to get built, and that's actually kind of getting delayed, um, they are living to, with each other right now just to test the waters and making sure that they, you know, that it works for them. And um, we also do here in this scene meet Kiana's twin, a.k.a. her mom, Michelle. And this is no shade to Kiana, but your mom looks, y'all look like y'all are sisters. And I'm saying that as a compliment. Because if you, if your mom ages like that, I can only imagine you're going to age the same way. And that is amazing. That is black girl magic to the fullest. But anyway, so the conversation of moving into the house prior to getting engaged comes up. Kiana isn't really stressed out about it, but clearly it's one of those things she's going back and forth over. Um, I think more or less because her mom's pressuring her for the ring. And, but Kiana's like not really needing that. Um, and also too, we do find out more about Greg's situation is that Greg is divorced um, and he has three daughters. And this is the first relationship, serious relationship that he has been in since the divorce. And the first time that his daughters have met anyone that he's dated. Um, since the divorce. So um, I think they're trying to do things the right way, but to the same degree, I kind of, I don't know. I'm kind of torn on the feelings of this because I guess it depends on how do you feel about getting married and if you are going to have children. For me personally, because I don't necessarily need to get married, I'm okay with moving in with someone prior to getting married. Um, and also because, I mean, it worked out for my parents. So I just kind of see it as like my parents did that way. So I don't see why you wouldn't do it that way. But I also do understand the school of, you know, don't, why give away the milk? You know, what I mean, I forgot the whole saying about the, um, you know, the cow saying. I forgot what it was. But basically give away the milk for free type situation. I think that's what it was about. But I guess my whole thing is if you're not going to get married and you're not necessarily going to ever have kids, doesn't matter if you move in together prior to marriage, if marriage is not necessarily the most important thing to you. For me, it's not just because, you know, I don't know. I guess I'm past that point and I also just rather be very independent. <laughs> um, now, if I could find, find someone that meets my, meets my energy and meets what I'm going through, we're, we have the same vision, great. But it's not something I'm pining for. So maybe that's the space that Kiana's at. But hey, to each your own. Um, let me know in the comments how you feel about that. Next, we have Giselle with her daughters. And this is my favorite Giselle. And also, too... This season, Giselle is really trying to show us, you know, trying to show us some things. Um, and anyway, her daughters are getting ready for prom, her twin daughters. And then her other daughter, Grace, is also there helping out as well. And Cal's the one who's styling them. And they, side note, they turned out looking gorgeous. I almost want to make it my thumbnail. I'm debating on whether I make it my thumbnail for this video or not. But the way they looked, oh my gosh, gorgeous. And, um, but anyway, Giselle states that she is starting to kind of feel 
you know, have the feels because in the past, whenever there was any type of major events like a homecoming or a prom, or anything of that nature, her dad would be there. And so that's kind of a, a source, you know, still a new thing for her to adjust to. But J Jamal does join them and um, helps the girls get ready. And then they kind of negotiate the curfew situation. And we kind of see the difference between the twins. One of the twins um, is a little angel. She's a little bit more reserved and adore. She's like, I'm ready to be outside. She's like, I'm ready to go to pound town. And I kind of looked up like crazy too. And Giselle was kind of like, wait, what does that mean? And not thinking, oh yeah, she's the age where she would like sexy red. This is a sexy red reference, but I'm just like, oh God. <laughs> Cause the fact that, and, and, um, I think I forgot who it was. I think it was Cal saying there will be no pound town today. Like <laughs> that's not happening. Um, cause again, it's the prom. And anyway, so the producers who are shady mentions um that jamal has a girlfriend um jamal bryant which i guess okay i guess that's something but i kind of i don't get why that matters and then even giselle kind of made it said it without saying it that that doesn't matter to her because i mean as long as he's like there as a dad i don't care which I kind of agree, I kind of agree with that sentiment, but anyway, outside of that, the other thing that we do learn is that Giselle actually does have regret for how she treated the ladies at her party, and she feels like she should not have kicked them out because it was misdirected anger. She wasn't really mad at them because their heart was in the right place. They're just trying to to support both events, and really, she's mad at Karen because Karen knew what she was doing, which that's a fact. Karen definitely knew what she was doing there. But anyway, outside of that, it was a really, really cute scene. And like I said, the ladies look beautiful. One of the, one of them, the dates showed up. I don't remember if it was Angel or Doris date. And they went off to the prom. And you also saw that Giselle was holding back, kind of getting misty eyed because she's, you know, she knows after these two, she's done. She's an empty nester, like for real now. And so her having to deal with this back to back is kind of crazy because Grace, you know, she just went through this last year for last season with Grace because they're only like a year apart. Um, cause I think technically besides the, the, okay. So clearly we have the twins, but then I think Grace is, is Grace the Irish twin too? Cause I mean, it literally was back to back. If they're only like a year apart, but maybe they're anyway, they're a great apart. Not necessarily a year apart, but they are a great apart. Let's go with that. But anyway, good, good scene. Moving on. Side so note, um, again, I'm heading to the gym. And so I did not feel like going on camera because I'm going to go to the gym after this. And the, the reviews are related as it is. So let's, let's get it out. Um, also, okay, back to the show though. So the next scene, we have Mia and Ink, and we find out that Mia and Ink, they do the staycation situation and rent an Airbnb every so often because we know that Gordon lives in the same building as Mia. And I guess Gordon has this thing where he just pops up. And so they want some alone time to make sure the pop-ups don't be happening. So they do like the Air Airbnbs to make sure they could do that. And, um, we also find out that Ink is her high school sweetheart. And then we see these old pictures of when they were together back in high school. So they were kind of on again, off again for like years prior to the Gordon situation. And then besides that, then we do see that Jacqueline then shows up at this Airbnb. And what they're going, what they're planning on doing at this Airbnb is they're actually going to be celebrating um Jacqueline's um PP um birthday and you're probably like why are you saying PP um I think I think it was called parental I think she said parental assistant or something like that parental um parent I forgot what she said um but this is Patrick um Patrick is her ex-boyfriend who she co-parents with um, and we also find out that Jacqueline's two daughters, so the two daughters show up and this is Patrick and Ink meeting for the very first time, by the way. And so they're basically just 
cutting, you know, kind of just getting together, um, celebrating him, having a good time. And then we find out that um, they sit down for a little bit and they talk about um, how's Gordon handling things, how's Gordon's doing. And of course, it's a mess. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much how that scene ends. It was kind of nice, short, and sweet. Also, side note, I will say this. Um, I think Jacqueline's very much okay with just being a friend of because she definitely is coming off a lot more as a friend of. Jazzy, the way she is doing things so far, because she seemed like she could stand her own and stuff, I don't know. I could see her being a full-time housewife, depending on how things go for the rest of the season, but she... She has that energy about her that she exudes like she could be full time if we get into her story and stuff. But anyway, so next we have. Oh, also, other thing is this episode had a lot of short scenes, if you did, if you haven't noticed. And none of them are dual scenes. So this is why I feel like I keep saying we had another short scene. But it's because there were a lot this episode. But um, Stacy is with her personal trainer, Ger um, Gerald. And... Um, Per her advice of her friend, and I'm doing the air quotes even though you can't see it, of TJ that she kind of needs, you know, get some muscle. And then this is where we meet the infamous TJ and they're working out together. And then after they work out together and whatnot, um, we then do see that TJ asks questions about the divorce. And um, it seems like TJ has apprehension on his end to really pursue her all the way. And I get it. It's because the divorce isn't final. And we also find out he's not a virgin, but like he does not want to fornicate basically until marriage. And I am a little confused about that still, but I know to each their own when it comes to that. And Stacy's willing and ready and able to like, you know, go for it with that idea. But we still don't know much about this divorce, um, even though... TJ, I think, was trying to produce a little bit and give us more, but she wasn't really ready to answer all that. But maybe it'll come later on in this season. I mean, it's only episode three, so there is that. Um, but <clears throat> anyway, what do y'all think about this relationship, though? I guess I don't really see TJ and um, Stacy lasting because... I don't know. I think he already clearly has apprehension because he wants to make sure he's not the rebound. And also too, because she is in a vulnerable state and she's going through a time of a divorce, you, that is a major risk. And I think that's the other reason why he's apprehensive, but he's not really saying that. Um, but I think once that divorce passes and there's some time, I don't know where this will go, but I guess my only concern for Stacy is that this man TJ is wasting her time. I don't want that for her. Um, you know, I get she's trying to be very, very um, demure, I guess is the word, even though I hate, I feel like this is a word that's already being overused. But um, I think she's trying to keep it cute when it comes to this divorce because they're not divorced yet. They are still going through mediation and it seems like there's more going on with that mediation than what she's telling us. Um, and I, I kind of did allude to that. But anyway, that's pretty much how this scene ends. But let me know what y'all think about this TJ guy. Um, and I think it's because he is a friend of hers first. He kind of does know her very well. But I am worried about Stacy and the fact that she is with the guy who... I don't know. He clearly has apprehension. And I don't say, I'm not saying him not wanting to have sex with her, be physical with her is part of the problem. But it also isn't necessarily helping because them two on screen, the way they look, it just seemed like they're lacking all forms of intimacy. And even though you don't, you're not wanting to have sex, it's just in order. For a romantic partner, I feel like intimacy is important and not necessarily sexual intimacy, just closeness. There's a different kind of closeness when it's your romantic partner versus it being like a best friend. And I'm not seeing it, but this is just off my initial reaction of what I'm seeing on screen. All right, so then back with um, 
this is, I think, the next day. I'm not quite sure, but Mia and Ink are still in the staycation. Well, no, they're not in the staycation house anymore. Now they're back at Mia's place. And we find out, I think Mia now lives in D.C. now. And this is her fourth place in four years. And a rental, of course. And then the producers show all four places she stayed at. And she, she knows it's a mess that she keeps moving. But she says that she does love where she stays at now. And she's in a very happy place. And then from there, Ink asks, like, okay, so how's Auntie doing? A.K.A. Giselle. And <clears throat> Mia does say, hey, actually, Giselle actually did apologize. Um, so we're good now. But Karen, child, I don't know about that. And it turns out that because it is public record what's going on with Karen, she has a court date. And shady, 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 Mia and um, Ink, they're whispering this as if there's like, she's like, it's embarrassing, which it is. I will say that because, you know, at Karen's age, this should not have happened. And, but at the same time, girl, girl. But anyway, that's pretty much the scene here. Next, we then do see that um, Giselle meets up with Ashley. Um, well, sh initially she meets up with Ashley showing up first. And then we had Stacy and Jazzy joining. And then after that, then um, Wendy. And when and, um, Giselle states that she doesn't want um, Karen there because she wants to get to know these ladies without Karen because K Karen's already gotten to their head or whatever. And I don't, the reasoning behind that, I'm like, Giselle, I don't know. Her, old Giselle's kind of sleeping out a little bit, but she, we're, we're, let's pretend that's not what it is. But I feel like that's part of it. But anyway, so Giselle immediately apologizes to Jazzy and Stacy. And um, Wendy's there and she's like surprised. She's like, what, what? Um, but she just showed up. So she didn't actually see the apology. But then right when... Uh, after she apologized, um, she does show up. She's like, oh, wow, she apologized. And then <laughs> Wendy's like, this Giselle's different, man. She's different. <laughs> and, but of course, Wendy is still cautious as she should be. But then after that, then Giselle starts asking questions to get to know Stacy because she doesn't really know much about Stacy. And, this whole entire time, as Giselle and Stacy are like in conversation, we have Ashley intervening, like basically spilling Stacy's tea as if it's hers. And Stacy is pissed. She is so annoyed. She's like, girl, why are you in my business like that? I really wish she would have said it like that, but instead she like, you know, kind of was classy about it and kind of went to the point. She's like, why are you talking about, like, she's like, I invite you to my home multiple times for you to just air out my business like it's nothing. And then Ashley shady and annoying as all get out of her confessional. She's like, I didn't know it was a secret. Da, 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 da. And really at the end of the day, I just really wish because Stacy, from what I'm getting so far, is pretty classy. I do need someone who's not so classy to get her together. <laughs> because I am so sick of Ashley. And when, I, and when I'm sick, I'm sick and tired. Y'all know where that comes from. I'm sick of her. But anyway. And Stacy's already sick of her. And she just and it's only been like episode three. And, but anyway, that's kind of where things end um, when it comes to this meetup. Um, they're, they're over, Ashley. But then, oh, they do talk a little bit about, I forgot to mention, they do talk a little bit about Mia's trip that's coming up because that is the next scene. And um, Wendy's excited because it's her birthday also at this trip. And the ladies are like, yeah, it should be fun. But then from there, we do move on. And then the final scene um, is the day of the trip. All the ladies fly to North Carolina, aka the Queen City, um, to um, Mia's, you know, event. And the only lady that did not fly with them is Stacy. We find out it's related to a family member. Um, she doesn't, she doesn't fly if she can help it, so she's driving instead. 
Um, I guess it was like an anniversary of a family member. I didn't quite get that, um, what, what it was exactly. But anyway, she's the only one that did not fly with the ladies. And then the ladies are heading to the place that they're staying at. And we have Giselle and Wendy are in the car together. And they're bonding. I mean, they're really getting along. And Giselle and her confessional is like, I'm actually really, really enjoying Wendy. And the rest of us are like, see, Giselle, you could have been bonding with your AKA sister for seasons. But instead, you decide to hold on to a grudge for no reason other than just to be annoying. And y'all y'all are getting along. And then Wendy, on the other hand, is like, I am enjoying this conversation, but I still, you know, I'm still proceeding with caution, as she should. And then we also then have Kiana and Jazzy. They're in the car together, and they're talking about their guys. And um, both of them, we find out both of them have hit the two-year mark of dating their guys or being with their guys. And Jazzy was like, yeah, you know, because I think the question came up of does he have kids? Um, Jazzy's man who plays for the, um, oh, wow, Kansas City Chiefs um, football, um, the football team. Um, and turns out he does have kids. And Jazzy made a point twice to say, this is his first serious relationship. This is his first serious relationship. <laughs> and that was funny. But at the same time, I'm like, girl, why are you saying this in front of Ashley of all people? You know, Ashley is just going to be shady of some sort. Like, I, if I was them, I would never disclose any information that could be used potentially against you, which is basically any of your business. Um, so there's that. <laughs> but anyway, so then also, too, we then see Mia and Karen are in the car together. And Mia's trying to check up on um, Karen, but at the same time, shading her all at the same time. And Karen is still on this, I can't talk about this case because it's ongoing. I can't talk about it. Um, and in her case, it is a little different than Shannon's situation because Shannon did not try to fight it. She, you know, had a good lawyer and handled it right away. So by the time the season started, everything was settled. With Karen's situation, which is slightly different, she is fighting it tooth and nails if none of it happens. She's not taking the charge. She's not really owning up to it. And I think this is where we're looking at Karen funny because it's like Shannon took responsibility for what she did. And Karen is not. Um, and I, what, regardless of what caused the accident, the fact that you had more alcohol or even despite... Uh, an illegal search you had an open container in your car as you know you just kind of got to pay it and also too when they took the breathalyzer the breathalyzer was still breathalyzing and it wasn't like that was your only charge you had multiple charges but at the same time i don't know i guess i i i, I want to give karen grace the way we've been getting giving um shannon grace but the main reason why we've been getting Shannon Grace is that she's owned up to the fact that she did make a mistake. And Karen has not. And that is a huge difference there. But anyway. Um, but at the same time, you know, when that situation happens, you do have the right to fight it. If you really think that, you know, there was a legal search or whatever. But I, I still, 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 still it doesn't matter. But Mia is just basically like, okay, well, I know she's like, it was on the internet, girl. She's like, you're eventually going to, you know, you are going to need to eventually, you know, talk, talk about it because you're going, it's, you're going to break eventually. And Mia professional was spot on. She's like, it's not what happened is an issue. I mean, it is an issue, but it's just the fact that she's not even at the part where she's owning up to it. And that's the problem. What I just said. And then from there, it speeds along to what happens on this trip. And this trip is going to be a mess. <laughs> we see that Karen gets into it with Mia and also Jacqueline. We also see that Kiana gets into it with Ashley. And this is like supposed to be Wendy's like birthday um, trip slash Mia's, you know, outing. And it seems like it might be a mess. But anyway that does conclude the episode and again it was another great episode of potomac um 
I am debating whether I'm going to stick around and watch New York or I'm going to go off and live life real quick and then review, watch and review New York tomorrow with Salt Lake City. I think I'm going to combine them two. Um, and as I mentioned before, New York has two more episodes for me. If after these next two episodes, if they're not giving what needs to be gave, they're out of the rotation. Um, I will let y'all know. Um, because I do not want to put out another review where I just am mad that I'm even reviewing the show again. Because <laughs> that last review, child, I know I know, I sounded like a mess, but it is what it is. Um, you know, I'm sure Bravo executives and stuff watch a whole bunch of different YouTuber reviews, like big and small, to kind of get a feel of the audience views of things. And if my little small channel can help them change some things with the totality i'm gonna keep doing it if i can but anyway that does conclude the episode please like comment subscribe to the channel if you get anything out of the content it's your girl sharon aka the Mel nostalgic runner and i will see you next time bye